Today's live stream brought to you by Allison Hightower, who's in my normal spot. I'm in the I'm in the chat spot. I'm I'm lording over the chat. I'm lord of the chat. Hello, welcome. We are here to do a scene by scene, frame by frame breakdown of the new trailers. Oh boy, oh boy. It's been a while. Oh, what's that smell? Yes, it's the brimstone and sulfur of the dragon pit. That's what we can smell. Hello, friends. Welcome to the trailer breakdown stream. Of course, we got two trailers, a green and a black trailer. I think it works better to look at the green trailer first. Not because I'm secretly team green. I'm wearing a Damon Targaryen sigil. Pipe down. Uh, but because of the green stole the throne. They sort of started the thing by seizing the throne. Stole, claimed, hey, you know, up to interpretation. Uh, and then Rhaenyra is sort of responding to that, uh, as well as with the Luke thing. So we'll do green first, and then I'll change the background color uh, to black. No, not to black. Maybe to red. And uh, we'll do that. So, yes. They need to make um, some, some Team Green Aegon Sigil t-shirts. We've seen it now. The gold dragon on green. Very nice looking. I would definitely sport that. Although, again, I am not Team Green or black. Um, just got it. I uh, just... Coming in fresh off a little Twitter fight with uh, Trey the Explainer, who of course has a big YouTube channel. Not really a, a fight; it's a, it's a Twitter fight. It just means we're arguing. He basically he posted something about like how can anyone support Team Green if you support Team Green, you out yourself as a sexist, basically. And I don't know. Maybe I guess if you're like gung ho Rainier hater, I could see that. But of course. As Princess Shireen says uh, to Stannis, in they, and they use this on Game of Thrones, it's the choosing sides that was the mistake. So, of course, the TV show is, you can see right there, all must choose. That's the theme of the trailer. But here we are team small folk here, nevertheless. Um, so if we're choosing sides, at least we want to choose based on who is the more responsible for the small folk ruler. But yes... The show wants us to choose sides. They have teams, Team Black and Team Green. They even named them for us. Uh, but of course, we here as adults who enjoy media, we are show enjoyers. We enjoy all the characters, good and bad. So, yeah, anyway, I don't know. I was just saying, like, you know, it's Team Black. It, he was, Trey the Explainer was kind of saying, like, this story is straight up a story about a woman having the stone uh, throne stolen from her. That's the core of the the struggle, and George is a feminist, and how can you be Team Green? And like, I don't know how you could be like gung ho Team Green, but I also encourage people not to be gung ho Team Black either, because everyone's made mistakes. And uh, bottom line is, you shouldn't center one person's rights to the throne over the good of the realm. Uh, somebody's saying I sound low. Maybe I just need to bring it in a little closer. I could no. I should. I should be up loud. I should be turn yourself up. I'm just. I'm. I'm pretty loud here. Anyway, point is, I was just. I'm always. I'm always stuck on the internet pointing out that like Rhaenyra made mistakes too. I like Rhaenyra, uh, but it's just that you know some people want to. She. She looks better. Like Aegon is. It's hard to say that Aegon is more qualified. He's not. He's shown less character you know, far lower character and he's got less experience. Um, you know, so I get that. I get people like taking Rhaenyra's side, like the team black side is probably easier to take, but at the end of the day, uh, no one really wins this thing. Spoiler alert. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like, it's a, it's a ward. A lot of people die. In any case, that's enough about that. Let's get right into the trailer. Um, the themes of the show are going to come right out. So, I will kill the sound so that we do not get demonetized. But uh, yeah, all must choose. So we see there's a lot of Aegon in this trailer. He is getting used to the throne. I like his on his uh, on his breast. There he's got the he's got a double dragon. There are two dragons that face each other, but they also create one big dragon head. So there's a little bit of symbolism there with the divided realm and then the united realm. So Aegon, maybe he's sort of claiming kingship over the divided realms. I am king over both sides. I am the one king. So it's pretty cool. A little cape flourish there. And yeah, guys, um, I cannot show the whole trailer. So we're not going to watch it here because then 
the stream will literally, it'll go black. They will strike it down. So I assume you guys have already watched it uh, moving with sound and all that stuff. So uh, let's see here. And then, so this this clearly Vagar being ridden by Kristen. No, Kristen Cole's not riding Vagar. But that's a pretty nice Vagar shot right there. Got the wings. She looks, yeah, she's ready to like unleash some dragon fire on something right here. She is flying down. When the dragon's flying down and opening its mouth, that's usually a bad sign. <laughs> now, this I questioned, why, wearing the, the I guess, <laughs> just a couple things here. First of all, where's your helmet, buddy? Maybe he lost his helmet, he's in the middle of a struggle or whatever. It's kind of like uh, in the movies though, you know, they always have the main actors with their faces showing when they should be actually covered. I guess Dune didn't do that, but the chain does go hard. I'm just not sure why you'd wear it on the outside of your armor. Seems like it would clink around and get all dented up and it would get stuck in between the, the shoulder thing and the, yeah, I don't know. I question that. If I had a nice gold hand chain, I wouldn't throw it on over the armor. But Kristen is trying, you know, he comes from nothing. He needs to constantly remind everybody, you know, that he's somebody, so... Very cool. Oh, I love that. That is sexy. Nice green dragon there. Yeah, I, I think it's welded onto the armor. You know, that actually would make more sense, wouldn't it? Flopping around, like <laughs> slapping him about the face. Yeah, that probably does make more sense. Very good. So... Again with the candles, so we immediately we think back to Rhaenyra and Alicent, the very defining scene in the Sept early on. In uh, in um, oh, never mind. Somebody says they saw it jangling. Okay, well that's thumbs down for Kristen Cole. Nice hair, poor treatment of necklaces. Uh, so yeah, we're thinking about the scene in the first one with uh, Rhaenyra and Alicent, obviously in the Sept. And I'm sorry that I'm looking this way, and the trailers to my left. It's I'm sorry. It's just, I'll move my, I could move my computer, I guess, and, and fix it. But uh, so here we see, this is the dragon pit. I should, we will, I'll go back for the dialogue, I guess. Let's just look at the scenes. But yeah, we need to talk about the dialogue too. Um, maybe I can, yeah, I'll, it'll be all right if I just play a little bit of it, I think. Oh, I do need to turn, no, I should have that on. Oh, okay. One second. One second. One second. We did. We did do this stream kind of all of a sudden this morning. I just need to plug in my sound card. Bum, bum, ba -da 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 -da. Camera just turned right up. Okay. Okay. Uh, honestly, guys. It's a wonder I can do anything with my ADHD, but here we go. So this should be able to, should be able to hear the sound. Well, you guys are hearing it, but I'm not hearing it. Um, why am I not hearing it? Uh, okay, let's just keep going with this. I'll come back to the sound in a second. I don't want to struggle just right now. Flourish. Okay, so by the way, yeah. Aegon and Kristen, I mean, uh, Aemond and Kristen are together in a lot of these shots. They're even, um, and this is gonna be a relationship to keep an eye on uh, as this war gets going. We're just getting started, by the way, if you're just rolling in. Do not fear. I'm just getting woken up. It's They released this at 8 a.m. West Coast time. It's brutal, man. All right. So, she's, so we're lighting candles. Remember, Alicent, some people are mad about this, but Alicent is a little bit of a reluctant coup, coup plotter. Um, they, you know, Otto and the other folks tried to do it without her, and they were going to take a more aggressive tact. They were going to send assassins to Dragonstone and kill the children. Um, and Alicent took control, and she instead sent one last peace offering to Dragonstone with Otto. I didn't go over, um, probably because, you know... Vagar ate Luke, um, or bit him and spit him out, I think is how it's going to turn out. But uh, yeah, so then Alice, so Allison kind of took control of the coup. 
And she said, well, yeah, you know, there's a struggle coming, but uh, we're going to try one last time, right, to make a peace offering. It didn't work out. So this is something we're going to see with Allison's character. She, and there was a line in here about like, oh, I've tried to do the right thing and it's all for nothing. You know, obviously her idea of doing the right thing is um, defined by the, uh, you know, her dad and the values of Westeros and the patriarchy and the faith of the seven and all that stuff. Ellen in the chat for Dear Luceres. Yeah, <laughs> pour, out, uh, pour out some liquor. Smoke them if you got them. Yeah, poor Luceres. Good kid. Good kid. Small dragon. You know, valiant effort. Small dragon. So, Allison is in the sept. She is obviously worried, you know. And honestly, we're going to see, like, the contrast we're supposed to notice here is between Aegon and Allison. Aegon is like, Hey, it's to be a war. Cool. He's sort of taking this as a game. And Allison is the opposite. She knows that people are going to die. And the, those people could be her children or her or anybody else. And even seeing Rhaenyra and her children die isn't going to bring Allison to any joy either at this point. Um, we'll see where it gets to. But yeah, so that's sort of the emotional tension of what's going on here. And... Yes, we. this is the dragon pit. So you can see the banners are being un... So we're sort of changing the... We're changing the curtains on the red keep here. That's literally what's going on. <laughs> oh, we'll get to Jace's hair. Don't worry. Yes. Spoiler alert. They fixed that. Because <laughs> the actor is... Abs I couldn't believe it. The first time I, I saw a shot of the actor who plays Jace, somebody remind me what his name is. Very good looking young man. They completely they just killed it with that the shag mullet thing. He he looks a little more like John. That's a good call, which is probably not an accident. Harry Collette. Yes, thank you. Good looking chap. So glad they glad they much more of a ladies' man this year, I imagine. So we're in the small council here. And we're in the throne room. I need to get this damn audio working. Hang on a second. That's what's going on. Okay. I see the problem. So let's go back here. I can play I can play short bursts of it. Maybe like 10 seconds, I think, is the rule. So I gotta stop every eight seconds or so. So the one true king, Aegon, that's where we're starting. And of course, every part of that is contested. He's not the one king. There's two claimants to the throne. True king is, it's a little shaky. It's a little shaky. They, it's all resting on Alicent's misinterpretation of Viserys' dying words, which no one else witnessed, even though everyone knows that he named Rhaenyra the heir for like 20 years. So, true, eh. Uh, he is a king. He's a king, just not the one true king. So they are, of course, trying to enforce that. <laughs> um, and let's see here with with the audio. Okay. Love that green sigil, by the way. Oh, when my husband was alive. That's right. I need this to be a little bit. Yes, the realm was at peace. So this is kind of a like, yeah, you know, everything was fine when Viserys was alive. But that's that's belying the fact that Viserys let all of this simmer, right? Like, the main, the main reason why this isn't an open and shut case for Rhaenyra, meaning, yes, Rhaenyra was the rightful queen, and she had her throne stolen by the scheming high towers, and that's all there is to it. The main thing that cuts against that is not only not only the idea that Rhaenyra, her children, aren't Laenors, but the fact that they lied about it, and then the fact that they're killing people like Vaymond, and in the book, Vaymond's cousins have their tongues torn out as well, in order to enforce the lie, right? Like, it's important because of the patriarchal rules of Westeros, and part of the story is highlighting, and this was Trey the Explainer's point, in fairness, is that George is meaning to shove our face in the fact that these rules are unfair and rob the realm of the better ruler 
for the sake of, of sex and gender. And that's absolutely true. Okay. The main thing that complicates the story is the fact that Viserys and Rhaenyra have to lie about the paternity of her children because of the law. Um, and then they go around killing people who speak the truth. Now, on the show, Vaymond is kind of a dick, and nobody really wept for him. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, I know you can't hear the trailer audio, that's okay. Um, I'm just trying to discuss the dialogue. So I will repeat the dialogue. It's just so I can hear it, so I can discuss it. I think if I play the audio, it is more likely to get struck down. They are very touchy about this stuff, so apologies. Oh, right. It's on his deathbed. On his deathbed, he claimed this and that. So basically, it's just Alicent clinging to this idea that she's trying to make herself believe that that's what Viserys meant. Maybe. I. We can debate about what, you know, if Alicent is sort of fooling herself or if she really believes that's what he was trying to do. Um, this is actually based off of a historical detail. So this, this, the House of the Dragon, I can't put on the closed captioning. I'm sorry. I downloaded the trailer and I cannot, I did not download with the captioning. Um, but again, I'll just repeat it. So um, this is based on the anarchy, which is a period of British history that I don't know very well, but it's well known that this plot is similar to the anarchy. And in that, in the real history, there is a deathbed changing of the air detail. So House of the Dragon didn't completely invent this. They didn't pull it out of thin air. They actually borrowed it from the real history that George uh, based the story on. So that I thought was interesting. Um, but yeah, bottom line is that the Greens seized the throne. They did not go through any sort of official process to adjudicate the claims about Rhaenyra's kids or anything like that. Uh, they just took it. And in the, they let Viserys' body like rot in his bedchamber for several days while they decided what to do and locked everything down. And then they rang the bells. So it's we're not supposed to miss uh, that the Greens, you know, they just took it. Um, kind of like Cersei and Ned. It's like Cersei, she ripped up the paper. And she's like, yeah, well, I'm sitting on this bitch. So <laughs> that's that. So he's, yeah, she's just saying, uh, you know, Viserys wanted Aegon to succeed him. So she's just, again, going over the little threadbare fig leaf. Okay, so here we go. We've got, we're back to the crossbow game. Shout out to Euron. Let's expect this to be a little bit less silly uh, than it was on the TV show. But of course, we know this is the major way that you can kill dragons. Uh, Meraxes and Dorne. At this point in their history, that's the big example. And of course, Meraxes was killed by the Dornish, and the Dornish are partly made up of the Roinar, who fought the dragons back over in Esos. So this is something, um, it, you're just, it's a fun little thing you're supposed to notice. One of the reasons why the Dornish had better tactics for fighting the dragons, basically hiding in hidey holes like we see on the Stepstones with the Crab Feeder, um, and then using crossbows to fire to to kill Meraxes, that's because the Roinar had experience fighting dragons, so not a not a coincidence. So here we see these very cool cross. I mean, this is and anything medieval with winches and ropes and gears. So this is this is what we live for. That and Jace's new haircut. So this is cool. Big nasty bolts on there, and that is. Uh, so this is the Red Keep. Oh, God. It's one of the... Co it's uh, Eric and Arik, whatever. It's, um, I think, is it Arik that's with Rhaenyra? No, Arik is with Aegon. So this would be Arik, yes. Anyway. Uh, oh, let me do some super chats. Adam Wolford, thank you. HBO and Warner Brothers, really bad at striking down streams. Yeah. Put an overlay like a watermark. No, it's, it's about, I think it's about the 10 seconds rule. Um, I think that is the deal. But uh, oh, let me switch it to all chat. Sorry, if anybody's message hasn't appeared, 
I'm sorry. I had it on the thing where it does its own sorting. Now all the messages will be up, so I apologize. But let me just quickly... Uh, oh, there was a super chat. Now it's gone. Sorry. If you can repeat your question, if it was a question, I will grab it. Okay, so let's keep on going here. Okay, so this is auto. Auto, auto is trying to. He's trying to hashtag Team Small Folk here. They wish now not for the good of the realm, but for the satisfaction of vengeance. Okay, so thank you, Thalia. Love your content and can't wait for more. Happy to see you live. Uh, yeah, drop your drop your uh, Twitter handle so people can check out your art. On Twitter or Instagram, either one. Uh, and uh, it's, I think it's Thalia Joy, if you want to check out Thalia's fun a Song of Ice and Fire artwork. Uh, so Otto is basically saying, "Oh yeah, those that Team Black, they're not they're not in this for the good of the realm. Not like me, Otto Hightower. No, they're in it just for ven the satisfaction of vengeance." There's a lot of projection. So remember, Damon. I mean, one of the things that Otto used to turn Alicent against Rhaenyra in episode five, I believe it was, was he was saying, if Rhaenyra takes the throne, she'll have no choice but to put your children to death. And in the books, they make more of it about Daemon. They say, oh, da if, if she takes the throne, Daemon's a monster. He's Megor, come again, and he'll kill the children and all this and that. Um, but then what do we see in episode either nine or 10, I forget which, when the Greens were doing their coup, Otto wants to send an assassin to kill Rhaenyra and her children. I think it was both, I forget which, but basically, yes, every accusation is a confession <laughs> with Otto. So yeah, <clears throat> now the thing is, if we set Otto's hypocrisy aside, above all of this is the good of the realm. Like there, he is using a real valid argument it's just hi hypocritical when he says it because he's not abiding by this principle that he's espousing. However, both this, then this is the thing I was trying to argue with Trey the Explainer, politely, is that both sides are wrong for going to war over the chair. That's the whole thing about the Game of Thrones is that it's a game the High Lords play that causes the small folk, the regular people to suffer, right? So... I have pointed out that at the point that the Greens seized the throne, because they were in King's Landing, Rhaenyra's on Dragonstone, hiding out with her bastards, if you will, okay? Rhaenyra has a choice whether or not to press the claim for the throne or not. And she's undecided at first. And it's really the death of Luke that pushes her over the edge. And this is good writing here, because we're supposed to imagine, well... If, if it hadn't have been for Aemond and Luke at Storm's End, maybe Rhaenyra decides, you know what? It's not worth pressing the claim for the throne. I'm not going to plunge the realm into war just so I can sit on the throne instead of Aegon. But she, that kind of went by the wayside once Storm's End happened, it seems like. I mean, I guess you could say they still could have sued for peace and used that as leverage to demand concessions, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, the point is, Rhaenyra presses the claim and decides to fight for the throne, uh, and then, and then it's all downhill. So yeah, I do think Luke is kind of the spark that sets it off. So who, let's see what dragon this is here. Um, let's talk about yeah, this this is uh, messy hair. Damon is the best Damon. <laughs> If you remember, after he came to the small council, after the night of like chopping off naughty bits of all the criminals, and he looked like a tousled elf, that was the best Damon look. So we got more tousled elf Damon. He's looking over the camp here. This reminds, so this is almost a mirror to the shot of the hunt in episode three, I believe it was, when they, you know everyone was on the hunt. They had a shot of all the Targaryen tents in the valley. It was I think it was the same angle. And so now... We're not going on a hunt. <laughs> We're going on uh, something a little more bloodthirsty. Love the delivery of the satisfaction of vengeance. 
you feel like Otto would have made a great like Protestant preacher in like the 1700s, just like fire and brimstone. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. I think he could, he could deliver that. Just Risa Fons, just like, uh, not that I want to hear that, but. Um, so what dragon is this? That's the game most people want to spend the most time on is what dragon is this? I never really care that much because you can't tell and we'll find out. And this looks kind of like a yellow dragon. So maybe this is Cyrax. We see Rhaenyra. So I'm guessing this is Cyrax. Ah, uh, yes. So you can see the curved horn. The curved horn. So this is a Cyrax dragon. Probably Cyrax. Yeah. Sunfire also has similar horns. But yeah, I'm going to say that's Cyrax. Okay, so that is that is a cool looking shot right there. It's the way that if if the battles look like this, that reminds me of like um, Troy, you know the Brad Pitt movie Troy. It's just like epic lighting and dust everywhere. I'm really excited to see like that's the main thing you guys are in store for with the season two. Uh, this is turning into a war show now, <laughs> like straight up. Um, it's going to be a lot of action around battles. There will still be the court intrigue and all that stuff. But as you can see, it's getting like this is transforming into a war show where it really was not in season one. So it's going to feel almost like a little bit of a different kind of show. Not too much, but hopefully it'll just be a raising of intensity. I guess we did have the stepstones, so they prepared us a little bit. I also think that's why they spent more time on the stepstones is to get, you know, to get our feet wet with vibes. Let's hear the dialogue here. Um, Plot against the king and I will pay it back a hundred times over. Love Tom's delivery. I think Tom Glenn Carney is going to be uh, really strong this year. You know, he... He only had a little bit to do last season. We just started to see. But this season, Aegon's character gets tested a lot. And I think he's going to be up to, the, up to the task. So I'm very excited about that. And of course, I met Tom at a, at a con. So I'm slightly biased, but not too biased. And then, so yeah, we're just, uh, this is, oh, that's blooded cheese. This is a no spoilers you know, so we're not going to get into the stuff, but if you know, you know. But yeah, this is Blood and Cheese sneaking through the Red Keep. There's no doubt. Oh, so that guy, that is Blood. He's the one on the City Watch, and we saw him in Season 1. Uh, he was the one that was most enthusiastic about helping Damon chop off naughty bits. That's who he was. And... uh yeah, so we people were guessing that must be, that's going to be blood. And indeed, that looks like him. And that would be Cheese meeting him. And that's all we're going to say about that. And so now Aegon's talking about plotting against the king. Who would do such a thing? Who would do that? Um, oh, that's interesting. Oh, this is a, okay. So this is Aegon's war helmet. And they have put, oh, now I get it. Okay, this ugly ass crown that people have been dissing. It doesn't look nearly as good as the artwork of Aegon the Conqueror's crown. And that's supposed to be Aegon the Conqueror's crown, which is supposed to be set with square cut rubies. No idea why they went a different direction, except now I do. That's going to look like a Nazgul helmet. Look at it. It's a Nazgul helmet. That's what they did. They, they were planning, they made the crown like that because this whole time they were going to, they knew they were going to put it on a helmet and make him look like a friggin' Nazgul when he flies that dragon. That is evil. Oh, that's good. And Aegon really is a villain. You know, like, Rhaenyra is what I would call a gray character. Aegon is really coded more as a villain. And this is evidence of that. Cool. Well, I'm sure somebody's tweeting this out right now and getting millions of likes. But you saw me figure it out here. Anyway. Yeah. 
Aegon, he's he's sauce. He looks saucy. He's ready to go. I'm as fearsome as any of them, he says. So is th that might be Sunfire. Uh, this is in the Dragon Pit. So it's going to be a Team Green Dragon. And that is, that's got to be Sunfire. That's the Cyrax Sunfire style of horns. And that is a, definitely a golden color. You can see that they're trying to do a golden shimmer on the, on the crest. That is Sunfire for sure. Very cool. And he says, I'm as fearsome as any of them. And remember, people draw strength from their dragons. Sunfire is a dragon that grows a little faster than some of the other dragons. It's a Sunfire is a combat-ready dragon, even though Aegon is younger. It seems like Cyrax and Sunfire might be comparable. When I, re when I did the, the Dragons Ranked video, which most of you guys have watched, I'm sure... Um, and, uh, yeah, so the Sunfire <laughs> definitely, this is partly why Aegon's like, oh, I'm, I'm as tough as any of them. Yeah, because he has a pretty badass dragon and a grand and beautiful dragon too. So what do you think of Tom's ability to make Aegon somewhat sympathetic or at least psychologically complex? Oh, I've, I can't wait, um, without getting into any spoilers, Lady Lils, if you know Fire and Blood... Aegon's going to go through some interesting twists and turns that will change his character over the course of this war. And I do think Tom is up to the task. I'm very much, I think the word to use is compelling. I don't know that it'll be so much sympathetic so much as, as like compelling. We will start to, you, we won't be able to help but to adopt his perspective and, and crawl inside it. Kind of like when we're in Jamie and Cersei's head or even Tyrion's. POV. You know, they're very compelling characters, even though they're pretty warped. So yeah, he's up to it. He's definitely a good actor. And uh, I think they chose well. So, and that's the thing, like, people are, some people are like, why is Aemon so much taller than Aegon? Well, but the thing is, both actors suit the parts, and that's the important thing. So, Ryan of the Spice, if you're just jumping in, we just saw Blood and Cheese. They were in the hallway, right there. That is Blood, that's Cheese knocking on the door, and that's them in the hallway. So, Fearsome as any of them. Let's see what we got here. Ah, you have no idea the sacrifices that were made to put this stream on the air. I mean, to put, to put you on the throne, Aegon. That's what she is saying. Um, hashtag feet. <laughs> is that what she's talking? Is she talking about the feet? She's probably talking about everything. Um, by the way, one of the cut scenes that did not make it is in that coup, in the green coup episode, which I believe was nine. Um, before Allison interrupts and takes control of the coup, Otto and the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard... Uh, we're talking about corresponding with Dalton Greyjoy and potentially pro offering Alicent's hand in marriage to Dalton Greyjoy, which would be a copy of the main plot where Tywin wants to make Cersei remarry and Cersei pitches a fit. And Tywin's like, nope, I can still do that. Because <laughs> he's a total a-hole, Tywin. And speaking of Tywin and total a-holes, um, this Sunday, we are doing a tournament of villains. March Badness. March Badness tourney. The 32 worst people in Ice and Fire. People like the Tickler and Krasnys Monaklos and Chet. We're going to put them all head to head. Grey Waste, Tim, me, and Nettles. I've got a bracket made. We're going to do it like a game. We're going to run polls in the chat so you guys can vote on all the worst characters. And we're going to move them through the brackets. And we're going to figure out who the most horrific, killable person is in Ice and Fire. Is it Ramsay? Is it Tywin? Is it, is it Meg or the Cruel? We'll find out. So don't miss that this Sunday. That's going to be good. And that'll be Ice and Fire characters. So unfortunately, Alicent will not be in there. Uh, to win the tournament as the worst villain that George has ever created. I'm kidding. 
Okay. Uh, I did get a couple of PayPal's. Thank you, by the way. You can support the program with Super Chats or PayPal's. Um, Juiced says, the Greens have every legal right by precedent. This ET is king of Westeros and his family has ruled by Andal Customs for four generations, so he can't designate an heir, um, but one eye should have been given over to the blacks because he is a kinslayer by fault or not. Oh, you're saying for the... So that's some pretty medieval interpretation of law. I do... So, one of my criticisms of, of Viserys is that he did not firmly and clearly enough change the law to really make Rhaenyra the heir. Um, he should have made... He should have had a council or, or issued a decree with the master of laws, et cetera, et cetera, to say that from here on out, women can inherit either for just the great houses or just the throne or for everyone. They needed to decide that and spell it out. And they just kind of made an exception for Rhaenyra. So it's debatable. Like, you know, you've got the king's word is law, but then there's also law that exists. And Viserys says, even I am not above law and precedent. So when the king acts or speaks in contrast of established law, it creates a tension. And that's really the best way that I would be able to characterize this situation is that there is a lot of tension with different people's different ideas of what the law is. And that is how the story is written. And that's how we get this mess. Um, and then let's see, I got another one. Let's see if this question is, oh no, that was not, that was not, okay. So continuing on, let's see, oh. So, oh, we were talking about the sacrifices to put Aegon on the throne. There's the feet, obviously. I mentioned that potentially Alicent was going to be betrothed. Um, but yeah, basically, like, they've dirtied their hands, you know. Um, and they're not going to be done doing that either. So let's see what we just missed here. There is a, oh, that's a cool shot of the dragon. That reminds me of the Long Night episode a little bit can't tell what dragon that is that could is that no it's not Caraxes they all look a little bit noodly what castle is that is that Harrenhal that looks like Harrenhal yeah I guess it could be Caraxes the Targs do not rule by Andal tradition that's the whole point of Jaehaerys doctrine of exceptionalism well, but didn't didn't the fact that Jaehaerys had to like specifically get that carve out Juan over from the faith means that he he was kind of operating under Andal tradition. He just had to fight to modify it. But he's not just throwing out all the Andal traditions either. I think it's written to be murky, so I don't think there's any one take that's going to be like, "Aha, clearly, you know, this one side is completely completely legally in the right or the wrong. It's meant to be murky. Um, and we're meant to understand that Viserys is avoidant and didn't like clearly resolve. St he created a mess and then just killed, killed over and just let everyone, you know, I mean, it was super obvious that war was brewing. Like we, we, we can take a turns and say, Oh, they shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have done that. But if you just step back as a political analyst of Westeros, you could see this war coming a mile away. John Buxton, shout out Dave, the mods, and everyone in the chat. Yes, thank you guys for always being beautiful and wonderful and well-behaved and polite to each other and all that stuff. Um, I do appreciate that. Cool. Love you guys. You guys make this a fun place to hang out for everyone else and yourselves. So, cheers. Okay, so yeah, this is Heron Hall. That must that means this that is probably Caraxes. Uh, I sorry, I guess that's mild spoiler, but yes. And then we see Damon. Is is he at Heron Hall? Is he under King's Landing? Some people have speculated maybe he'll be uh, more directly involved with Blood and Cheese event. There's okay. I think there's some good dialogue coming out here. Yeah, my, it says, my uncle's a challenge I welcome. My uncle is a challenge I welcome if he dares face me. 
So you could see, okay. So now we got to go back to the, uh, <laughs> the scene at dinner, right? Where Damon and Eamon are facing off. Just the best looks are thrown at that one. Damon with the slow turning around and looking at Eamon like, and Eamon's just kind of like, <laughs> he walks off. But yeah, the thing about Eamon, it is, that is a L'Oreal. Yeah, that's pretty much a shampoo commercial. And you could, it makes sense that Eamon's wig is very straight. Like you could picture he like grooms it well, you know, his hair, the character. He's, uh, he's got like straight edge vibes, sort of like kind of a hard ass. In any case, he has Vagar. So he can talk as much crap as he wants to. It's not really about him fighting his uncle in one-on-one -on -one combat, although I'm sure Aemond would be ready for that too. He has the biggest dragon. He has Vagar. So he is, yeah. Everyone's agreeing with Scott. What'd Scott say? Hi, Fayfire. Welcome to the chat. What'd Scott say? Where's brilliant Scott's comment? If they change blood and cheese, I'm out. No, I don't think, I mean, I don't know what you mean by change, but I think it'll be something pretty close to that. It's going to be something horrible. I'm kind of worried that like, if it's, it's going to be the first episode, what are people going to say? Like, are people going to stop watching the show? That's like me with a uh, handmaid's tale. I watched the first season, barely made it through. Cause I have, I have trauma with cult like substances. So some of that stuff was a little close to home and personal for me. Nothing as bad as what's on the show, but the vibes. Okay. First episode of season two, I was out. I had to stop. I couldn't watch anymore after that one. I just understood the importance of what they were showing, but I couldn't do it. Just couldn't do it. I'm a baby. I don't watch horror movies. I'm very sensitive. They, they stay in my mind forever. I can't. So I don't know, again, we're not going to spoil it if you don't know what it is, but it's, it's a horrible thing that happens. There's horrible things that happened on the show. Obviously, episode one last season, we had Emma, the, the butchering of Emma, which was whew, tough to watch. Um, so, no, no, we haven't done the black trailer yet. We're doing green first, then black, Louise. Okay, so let's keep going here. So he's, Eamon is ready, and he's talking to Kristen Cole here with the shorter hair. Oh, boo. Boo, shorter hair, Kristen. Bring back Fabio, Kristen. In any case, like I said, these two are kind of the spine of the Green War effort. It's not hard to see that. Kristen as hand is an iron fist. I think that's the, the line from the book. My new hand is a steel fist, something like that. If he does, face, face me. Okay. So what is, is that? That's not funeral attire. That's just a veil. Are those people are crying though. Uh, is that like tears of joy or is that, are they weeping for something? Yeah, I think it's probably Viserys' funeral, right? Throwing ashes. Okay, thank you. That's why we have you, chat. That's why we have you. I watched these trailers once. I was just waking up and getting ready this morning. I have not, yeah. Yeah, that, I would have to say that looks like a funeral veil. Because the only time they're going to wear veils is a bridal veil or a funeral veil. Let's see what Otto's saying. Oh, yes. We will prevail and bring forth peace. Not like that. Team Black just bent on vengeance. All right. Hashtag Team Small Folk. Otto does not, when I, I'm going to make a Team Small Folk shirt, and guess who's not allowed to buy one? <laughs> speaking of, speaking of t-shirts, I do have something for you guys. 
Who wants a Nana Vagar t-shirt? Oh, <laughs> that's right. We're going to go over to the David Lightbringer bonfire store. Let me just drop this down. Or we can Oh, what's that? Those look like Nana Vagar shirts. Well, I'll be damned. Let's take a look. Mm, oh, that's, that's pretty sharp looking. Uh, that is some high Valerian there. It says, uh, what is it? It's fire and blood and fake teeth. That's what that translates to in high Valerian. So very cool. And this is by artist Shayna Lacey. So thank you, Shayna, if you're watching. And you can see the Reading Rhaegar Praise Garth shirts are available. The link is below in the description. It's our bonfire store. Uh, but yeah, we got Nana Vagar shirts. So go get them. They are fresh. Just put them up this week. I made sure to get a couple of women's cuts. A couple of ladies fits here. A couple of different colors, as we always do. That's, ooh, that's sharp looking. I'm sorry, I can't see the chat. I know you guys are probably going crazy right now. Let's see what the chat is saying. Can I get a medium? Yep. Drop the crop top. You got a crop. You got you got to make it yourself. That's the hottest crop top. But yeah, we got lots of lots of fits, lots of colors. So check it out. Let's get back to the trailer. I don't want to take too long. But I, I was very excited to announce the Nana Vagar shirt. And since we're doing the team green, I should have said it when we saw Vagar earlier. Apologies, but it's a lot going on. So. Oh, you guys can talk spoilers in the chat. Um, talk about whatever you want in the chat. I just, you know. Okay. Uh, so if you're late, no worries. We still got lots to go. We're only halfway through the first trailer. There's two trailers. Okay, so here we've got some Brackens and Blackwoods here. That is a Bracken. That's the Bracken horse. And these might be... Who are these people? Yeah, that's the, that could be Blackwood colors. Blackwood colors are black, white, and red. So even though we see mostly black and red, I'm guessing these are Blackwoods. The Blackwoods and Brackens are always fighting, as we saw in episode... Three, I believe it was when um, the young uh, Blackwood boy killed the older Bracken boy who was being a bully at Storm's End. So this looks like uh, looked like yeah, it's just coming back around. The um, there a lot of the local one of the nice things about how Fire and Blood is written and thus House of the Dragon is that they do a very good job of showing you how even an overarching war, especially a civil war is going to bring all these local feuds to the surface. And so sometimes these battles and wars will turn on very specific local details and characters. So yeah, this is a really gorgeous looking location. It looks very Riverlandsy, Maybe Westerlandsy with the hills. But of course, Bracken and Blackwood are, Wester are Riverlands houses. Ooh, it's pressed to digitation. Who's doing that? It must be Aegon. Oh, they're not showing us. I bet you that's Aegon. Or maybe Laris. Who do you think? Is that Laris or Aegon? Or Aemond? See, the thing is, it cuts to Aemond, but he's, he doesn't have the coin. He's, and he's very serious. Like, playing with the coin is like... It's those casual things. It's either Laris or Aegon. It's a seven-pointed star on the coin. It's an Andal coin. That's the Andal. Uh, yeah. It kind of looks almost wavy like a sun, but I think that is a seven-pointed star. Yeah, it's seven. So yeah, I'll say that's either Lari, Jack Sparrow on the small council. The thing is, Aegon is always doing that. He's playing with his crown. He's like playing with the ball. I, so that's probably Aegon, because that's how they're building his character. Like, this is a game to him. He's playing games. He's doing tricks. Thanks, as always, for the superior content, says Anthony. You're welcome. Praise Garth. All right. 
So then we see Alex. Yeah, just small council fun. So this, this, okay, this is the same scene in the first trailer we saw Kristen Cole beheading somebody. That is at the end of this little plinth or whatever it is. Um, he is walking to do a beheading right here. So he is going to some castle and executing a traitor for siding with Rhaenyra, probably. There's going to be some of that on both sides. So you can see there's lots of people watching. This is a public execution. God, this is going to be a really tense moment, I bet. Whoever's master of coin is playing with the coin. Maybe. I think it's Aegon. He can play with any coin he wants to. Okay, yeah, so this is a good line. We will prevail and bring forth peace. But but you, must for the path to victory now. but you must accept that the path to victory now is one of violence. Aegon <laughs> says, good. To war, to war then. <laughs> uh, that's beautiful. To war then. Let's see if he's got the coin in his hand. He might. He's sort of doing a creepy little hand thing there. He's got some squisher hands going on. He could be still playing with the coin. God, that's a little unnerving and creepy, isn't it? Like he, like, he just can't wait to, like, mess some shit up. <laughs> yeah. He has a ring on there. Oh, we need to compare the hands. So he's got a ring... On his right pinky. And there's no ring. Man, you, you're so good, chat. So sharp. So that is not Aegon. Theory, theory crushed. We've got one theory dead already. That's got to be Laris then. I would say it's probably Laris. <laughs> the the, the prestidigitation mystery. <laughs> Okay, we're getting to the important stuff. So who, who, what's this? That's a lot of blood. Is that... That could be a sheet or somebody's undergarment. That's like a silent sister or... Not a silent sister, but just like a, a handmaid serving woman. So somebody... Is... Yeah, this must be like a murder or something. I don't think that's like miscarriage or childbirth stuff this looks like some kind of murder a serving woman traumatized for life yes most likely so do all then <laughs> vagar's i like how vagar see here's the thing the bigger something is, like a plane, something that's in the sky, they look like they're moving slowly, kind of. And they, they just nailed this. I really think they studied World War II footage of like B-52 bombers. Um, if you go back to the one where Caraxes and Vagar are flying side by side in Pentos with Damon and Lena, they move diff like Caraxes, you can see he's more nimble and Vagar is just like, you can hear the bomb. <laughs> like, so yeah, I, I, I really like how they have done Vagar's flight. Like you could tell each gust is just like, whoa, whoa. she's actually fast because she can cover so much ground with those bursts, but she's not quick and it looks slower because of her massive size. So buy a Vagar t-shirt. And uh, and uh, and Stan. The only character you should be standing is Vagar. So here we can see Kristen riding without his helmet. Why? Where's your helmet, dude? You're gonna get shot or thrown off your horse. You can. It's dangerous getting thrown from a horse without a helmet. Ask Rhea Royce. Very dangerous.
So let's see. We've so this is another shot of this fight with one of the two, either Eric or Arik, in a bed chamber. So that's something bad is happening anytime you are sword fighting in the in a bed chamber. I, we cannot tell who he is fighting. Most of us that know Fire and Blood can guess. But yes. The Kingsguard fighting. Is that... This looks like the Red Keep, I think. But we haven't seen that much of Dragonstone's interior. So it could be that. King's Landing. Okay, so here's Allison's line. All my life, I've endeavored to serve both my house and the realm. And somehow none of it matters. Team Green is not one for self-awareness. I will just say that. <laughs> not one for self-awareness. Um, <laughs> there's some truth to that, but there's, there's some asterisks there too. But maybe that's highlighting the tension. Serving her house and the realm. Otto is... Otto has been putting his house ambition before everything. That is very clear. Okay, he can say what he wants about the realm, but it's clear that his agenda is House Hightower and Aegon. And we've seen his brother putting the pressure on Otto. Telling him, well, you better get Aegon named heir. Hurry up, come on hand. You know... Aegon, second of his name. He's So she can't serve these two masters. She can't serve House Hightower and the realm. And that's the point. Because of Otto's ambition. Because Otto is a hypocrite and he's not putting the realm first. So I wonder if Allison, if this will occur to her at some point and lead to a break between Allison and Otto. But we shall see. Olivia Cook, just stunning, stunningly beautiful, stunning actress. She's incredible. She just looks like medieval paintings come to life over and over. In some cases, they, they do actually look at famous medieval paintings for a couple of these scenes. And there are some people who've picked that out. But yeah, she's just looks the part. What's this? So that's not Hall. that's not King's Landing, that's not Dragonstone. This must be... Well, I know, what, this is Rook's Rest. That's what it is. I won't, again, no spoilers, but yes. You can see this is going to be the scene of a battle. There's long column of soldiers back into the, back into the distance. This is a really cool shot. Honestly, I can't remember a shot from... Game of Thrones that looked quite like this. And the best battle that Game of Thrones did besides a hard home white attack, which was really cool, was obviously Danny's attack on the Lannister baggage train in the Lannister army with the Dothraki. Um, oh, it's the chat froze. Thank you. Let me just fix that. Thanks, guys. Boom. That was a really cool scene, right? Uh, Danny's attack on the Dothraki. And so... Um, that we should see a lot more of that um and even better so no the trailer's not stuck it's it's um i paused it there are we good all right so yes that was a really cool scene and i think that was the first time it really felt like dragon war and we're just going to get a whole lot more of that so you can just love the perspective of the shot the look of the castle. It's just super cool. Like, so much landscape. Like, I can't even remember ever seeing this much landscape in Game of Thrones. So, sorry. I just... I'm excited by that. Somehow none of it matters. So, as... You know what I think? We've seen a couple... Um, we've seen a couple... I think that's Rook's Rest, but it's some. it wouldn't be Highgarden. It's not nice enough to be Highgarden. Someone's saying Golden Tooth. I can't remember if we're going to go there. Um, oh, somebody, yeah, somebody else is saying Golden Tooth. 
Okay. Well, in any case, it's some castle where we're going to have a fight. I think what we're going to see with Alicent, with all this water stuff, is I think that what we're supposed to be thinking of is like bathing. She feels dirtied by all of this. And she has this false, well, not false, but potentially, uh, uh, she has a sort of piety that is, you could poke holes in, okay? Uh, the image of piety, Rhaenyra certainly accuses her of the false righteousness and stuff like that. Um, ordering Sir Kristen to take out a child's eye in the middle of court like that is kind of psycho. So, yeah. So I think this bathing is going to be like the spiders, you know, she's trying to get the spiders off of her, but she can't. So it's going to be something like that because they keep showing us that sort of dream sequence of her standing at the lake. She's bathing, lighting candles. Like there's a lot of inner turmoil they're trying to depict here. Who is that? Bela, moon dancer. You can see the hair. Yes. And it's a small dragon. Hold to your courage. So Moon Dancer is like pearl and green. And you can see here with the light behind there is yeah, that's a little bit green and mostly a pretty pale looking dragon. That's definitely Moon Dancer. That could be, yes, that's probably also Moon Dancer because you can see the rider here. The rider is pretty big compared to the dragon. So that is still a very small dragon. If that were Vagar, the rider would be like a speck. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the same dragon in both these shots. This is Moon Dancer. She's flying and Bela are flying over. So this looks like, this forest, this is this looks like the same scene where we've seen a battle. We've seen Vagar flying over the forest. We've seen uh, Kristen on the on the horse racing through the woods. This prob this looks like all the same sh same place, right? This this scene. It's there's little oh, there's clearings and then there's like pine forest. See, those are not pine trees. Those are, I'm not sure, but they're, that's, those, are, those are like ash and oak and things like that. And this, hard to tell from the top. Could be pines, hard to say. All right, we'll keep going. <laughs> so here, let's see, let's listen here to the... The one true king Aegon. The one true king Aegon. So this is confusing. Ryan Condal has confirmed that this is sea smoke. It's not Dreamfire, although obviously sea smoke and Dreamfire are both Drogon style dragons. Look kind of like. T-Rexes, but where this looks like Dragonstone, that's a dragon keeper, must be the dragon pit. I think some of the caves in the dragon pit look kind of like Dragonstone with the black, you know, stone there. Sea smoke is a big mystery. I might have to make a video about sea smoke. I mean, we just don't know what's going to happen with Lainor, with they that we do know that they have cast both Adam and Alan of Hull, so we can rule out Lainor taking the place of Adam. We know that's not going to happen, but we do not know how they're going to resolve this issue. So this is interesting that this is on the Team Green trailer. Are they going to try? Are they going to make an attempt to claim sea smoke? Or is this maybe just the dragon keepers taking care of him until somebody else comes to claim him? Hard to say. Um, I don't think Allison is at Rook's rest. You have to remember, uh, Cheryl, all these scenes are cut together 
and they're not necessarily um, linked. So, yeah, I. It could be Dragonstone or the Dragon Pit, but if this is Dragonstone, why would it be on the Team Green trailer? That wouldn't make any sense. Unless someone from Team Green is going to Dragonstone to try to steal Sea Smoke. Um, there are Dragon Keepers on both Dragonstone and in King's Landing. I'm going to say that this has got to be the Dragon Pit just because it's on the Team Green trailer, but it is a mystery. But we do know for sure this is Sea Smoke. Ryan Condal confirmed that. I saw that earlier on Twitter. So. Oh, could it be High Tide? I, I mean, it could be. Anywhere there are dragons, there could be dragon keepers. But again, why would High Tide be on the Team Green trailer? So, I would... Why is Moondancer and Cyrax on the Team Green trailer? Why is Vega on the Team Black trailer? Okay, you got me. Um, well, it, we, I guess we can assume that the plots are intersecting, right? So, I was just saying Moondancer and Bela, who are Team Black, correct? They appear to be above the same battle where we see Vagar and Kristen. Um... We did see a shot of Rhaenyra and her just flying her dragon. So yeah, I guess it could be that they are intercutting some of the other team just to make the narrative point because they were talking about Rhaenyra. So I guess we can't take it too literally. So it could be, I guess it could be Dragonstone. I'm still going to say that this is um, the Dragon Pit, but we don't know. And we don't know what they're doing with Sea Smoke. So we will just have to see. We'll just have to see. Uh, now it's time for the Team Black trailer. So let's do that. I was thinking about making separate videos, but psh, why? What's the point? All right. <clears throat> uh, let me, um, I will, I'm going to give you some some fun, funky music for about 30 seconds while I use the restroom, and I will be right back. Let's do Reading Rhaegar. In case you're new to the channel, uh, there's uh, I um, Rhaegar lives in my house, and uh, I don't have a harp. He has learned how to play the bass guitar, and he lives on my couch. Uh, he does my ad reads for me, and he reads occult books, and that is his cover of the Reading Rainbow theme. So, if you're new to the channel, it's mostly very serious, and then there's some stuff like that. So yeah, anyway. Team Black, here we go. Just ordered a hoodie. Thank you, E. Anderson. Appreciate you. And shout out to Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull, uh, which is a large part of the soundtrack of my childhood because my dad grew up a big Jethro Tull fan and a prog rock fan. So that's why I can't listen to pop music now. Anyways. Okay, so first of all, let's just... Ugh. Emma is awesome, too. Um, you really can't... Bl so first of all, some people gripe about the Alicent Rhaenyra relationship being the center of the story. Um, I, I Look, I, I go on Twitter, so you don't have to, okay? I occasionally mention the things that the online fandom is talking about. Reddit, Twitter, Tumblr, whatever. It's kind of all the same sort of reactionary stuff. Uh, I basically just, <laughs> I listen so that you don't have to. Oh, the music is coming through now. Um, whatever, I don't know, don't know what's going on around here. I will get that in a second. 
Uh, but the actresses are incredible. I guess we just say actors now for everybody. But um, Olivia Cook and Emma Darcy, incredible. Just incredible. Like, <laughs> look at that look. That's fierce. And yeah, Emma does have that sort of mystical, elf-like, fae look. So does Matt Damon. You know, people... Some people... Okay. First of all, if you're out there calling people ugly or, like, commenting on people's physical appearance really at all, like, it's 2024. We don't do that anymore. But some people complain that the Targaryens aren't hot enough because they're supposed to be blood supremacist supermodels <clears throat> or something. I always see the Targs as looking more... They are, they are elves. They are George's version of, like, dark elves, kind of. So I love Matt Smith and Emma's look. Like, they both look kind of fey to me. And to me, that is... Uh, that's, that's what Targaryen should look like. So, anyway. Point is, the actors are very strong, uh, Emma and Olivia. And so... Ugh. Yeah, I, I I think it works very well that their relation the ages have been changed a little bit so that their relationship uh, was more tight at the beginning. So I like all that. I think that works. Anyway, Emma serving it up here. We fight for our queen. We fight for our queen. So this is a shot we saw. This is the same two shots. Damon walking somewhere in sexy nightwear. Uh, this is. Yeah, same shot of them fighting. So now we've got a Caraxes here. So that is Caraxes in the rain. We previously identified Caraxes at Heron Hall. This would probably be Heron Hall. It's just always gloomy and raining at Heron Hall. It's just how it is. <laughs> right, seeing as how they're inbred as hell, they're probably not all tense. Thank you. Um, I've always joked that instead of the Habsburg chin, they got the, you know, the dragon bond. But they also get lizard babies sometimes. And, uh, yeah. So. Anyways. Um, yeah. I, you know, just to follow up on that, and this is not really even some virtue signaling thing. This is just, like, my personal taste. Like, commenting on people's physical appearance. It's not, like, even when people are out there worshipping, like, how beautiful people are. It's a little, it's a little awkward to me. It's just like, yeah, I mean, I know it's always, everyone is beautiful. And so it's, it's cool to just praise people for being awesome and stuff. But it's like when people get so focused on physical looks, it's just, it gets a little weird. It's that can go to dark places. That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. Look up eugenics. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we've get so I am definitely going to make use of these red and black dragon logos. These are so sexy. I love this metallic dragon looking just ugh. some graphics artist absolutely killed it on this. <laughs> Someone told me Caraxi's neck was too long for him to be considered classically handsome and I was shook. <laughs> Uh, Valerians are Moorcocks, Mel Nibineans, not just Tolkien's elves. That's very, that's a very good call. In fact, the, the Valerians especially are just as much, if not more, Mel Nibine than they are elves. It's probably a, so the Tolkien side of it is kind of like, what if the elves wore Sauron's colors and rode dragons? Okay, so that's part of the thought experiment. It's very heavily inspired by Mel Nibine, as far as the dragon lords that live on an island and consider themselves above everyone and feel free to conquer and abuse anyone, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, yes. Praise Garth, it's 420. Buy a t-shirt. All right, so let's see what we're doing here. My father chose me, his firstborn child, to succeed him. My father chose me, his firstborn child, to succeed him. And this looks like the funeral for Lucerys. We can see Corlys and Rhaenys. We can see Bela and Reyna. 
That is Rhaenyra and Jace. Damon is elsewhere. Because Damon's a bad father and doesn't care about anything but war. So funerals are below him. No, he's, he's at Heron Hall. He's doing stuff. In any case. Um, father. Yeah, shout out to the people in Chicago. Make sure you boil that water. Uh, My father chose me, his firstborn child, to succeed. So yeah, again, the killing of Luke is the point of no return. There may have been an option, especially with Alicent showing a willingness to negotiate, but Luke's death pretty much killed all that. Uh, with the funeral scene, do you think they found a decent amount of Luke when they went out over to Storm's End? So in the books, they do not find his body. And it is rumored that he... One of the rumors is really fun. He lost his memory and then uh, like married a fisherman's daughter and lived as a commoner or something. So if you want to believe that, nah, we saw it happen. Um, but yeah, Vagar chomped and then sort of spat. You saw the drag, the dead dragon got spit out. Vagar didn't consume. So there may have been a body to be recovered. But it's very sad. And that is... I think that's the Isle of Faces. That's Harrenhal. That's a lake. That's an island. And that island has a whole bunch of red trees on it. That is the Isle of Faces. This is not big enough. The God's Eye Lake should be bigger. And the Isle of Faces should also be bigger. However, it's the Isle of Faces. That's pretty damn cool. Um, yeah, that is too small. That is too small. You shouldn't be able to see it from the shore, I don't feel like. Somebody's saying the scale of Harrenhal is throwing it off. Maybe. But I, I don't think you should be able to see the island from the shore. It should be like more mist shrouded. But that's... It's cool that, that it's here. Um, so this... Remember, there is a point later in the story, without spoiling anything, where somebody does go to the Isle of Faces. Okay. Well, I'm judging the size of the island by the size of the trees. I guess the weirwood trees are massive, but you can see the trees on there. Like, it's not a very big island. Um... Let's leave the size alone and just deal with the fact that it's here. This means that, yeah, that plot point later in the story where someone visits the Isle of Faces, they're definitely going to do that because they're showing it to us here. They're setting it up. Maybe we'll even get more Isle of Faces content. And by the way, somebody has cooked up not one, but two RLJ scripts one dealing with the fact that the new calendar art shows Rhaegar and Lyanna on the Isle of Faces, probably getting married. So RLJ's secret wedding video is coming in May. And in April, I'm going to precede that by doing my first RLJ video ever, where I'm breaking down the facts as I see them. And that will be called RLJ A Love Story. Just to troll those people who, uh, you know, hate Rhaegar. And like to take Leanna's agency away and make her a helpless victim. Love story, bitches. All right, so that's, we got RLJ content coming. And, um, oh, I've got a huge video coming with a big commissioned artwork. It's so tall, you can see the wall from the top of it. Uh, but that is under wraps for now, so. Lots of good things coming here on the David Lightbringer channel. Let's keep rolling. Is that Rhaenyra? That looks like Cyrax and Rhaenyra. Yes? I would think so. And flying to Harrenhal, that would make sense, since we think that Damon is at Harrenhal. Great stream, Dave. Any thoughts on how Fire and Blood will go in the timeline? Um... 
I think it will go pretty far. At least Hour of the Wolf and um, the young... Yeah, I, I, it's, I can't say without spoilers, John Buxton, but pretty far. Pretty far. And I think I'm... I think I might have missed a super chat earlier. Oh, okay, it's still here. I 100% getting get Rhaenyra as far as being robbed. My dad died in October, and his siblings and their kids took everything before he was even in the freezer. Ray is queen. So, condolences on both counts. This is unfortunately more common than you'd think. Um, having fights over inheritance, even the smallest inheritance. It can really divide families. It's a real thing that still happens, and it is always very sad. And it's one of those things where, like, everyone involved hates it, but somehow no one can stop themselves. You know, there's usually one or two siblings who are just like, forget it. I'm not doing this. But usually it's, yeah, it, it's, it can be really ugly. And this is writ large with this war. So I appreciate you sharing. Um, and again, condolences. And then there we go. Let's go back to the chat. All right. So we've got Rhaenyra and Cyrax perhaps going to confer with Damon at Harrenhal, just speculating. They're playing with the timeline here a little bit, which is fine. He held to his decision until death. Until death. He held his decision until death because she was just saying, my father named me, you know. So on the other trailer, we've got Allison stating her fig leaf of, oh, Viserys chose my son on the deathbed. And Rhaenyra is saying, you know, her claim. Viserys, he held to it his whole life. He held to his decision until death. Held to his decision until death. So where's this? Is this Dragonstone? Probably. Could be high tide. Hard to, it's hard to tell sometimes. It doesn't really matter. It's not a lot of information in this picture. So there's Cyrax on the beach. We have already seen, and that is Storm's End in the distance, the distinctive shape of Storm's End. Um, oh, you can hear the audio now. Okay, cool. Well, that's fine. I don't mind repeating it too. Is it, it's not like way loud, is it? Let me know if it's like horrifically loud. So yeah, this is her probably going to Storm's End there's boats there, so yeah, maybe this is about recovering Luke's body. They're just gonna make it super sad. <laughs> just really play up, but there, yeah, there's oh, Cy maybe this is Cyrax being sad over like finding out what happened. Yeah, I think that is what that is. I think that is a cry of mourning from Cyrax. Is there a dragon body anywhere here? What's this in the foreground? Is that a person? I think Rx's wing on the shore. Where? Um, I don't see a wing. Where, where, are you, where are we looking here? I see the three boats. Point, where, where am I looking in the frame? I see the three boats. There's something right in front of the middle boat on the ground. Is that what we're talking about? I think it's Rhaenyra kneeling over a body. Yeah, that looks right to me too. She's not on the dragon. That's just the saddle. She's, yeah, she's not on the dragon. So that's probably Rhaenyra on the ground there. So basically... It's probably Rhaenyra looking at Luke's body and Cyrax because there's that psychic link. She, she, Cyrax is giving Rhaenyra's cry of agony, essentially. Anger translator. Thank you. Cyrax is Rhaenyra's anger translator. That is, that is, yeah. So, yeah. Very sad, but also continuing to build up that idea uh, that there is that psychic connection. Listen, son, 
sits my throne. Oh, what was that? Alison's son sits my throne. Alison's son. So, so many ways to talk about somebody. You can say Aegon, that usurper, my step, my half brother, Alison's son. I am on TikTok, La Michelle. I just got on there. You can check me out um, on, uh, please don't talk about other streams on this stream. Thank you. Um, I am on TikTok. You can find me there. David Lightbringer. And we've got, there are no other streams. This is the only stream. It's my throne. S Allison's son my sits throne. my throne. That is just. <laughs> yeah, not Viserys' son. Allison's son. I mean to fight this war. I mean to fight this war. Right after we eat this very nice dinner here full of, oh man, I am hungry. Look at that. That is a spread. That is a spread. <clears throat> cool. Cheers. <clears throat> wow. And then, uh, yeah, love the dress. We've seen this before. Very fancy. Tool. And win it. Damon's like, yeah, it's my lady. I like it when she talks about war. Makes me not want to choke her as much. Was that a dragon through the window? Yes. So this is probably King's Landing, but there's just dragons in the background everywhere, kind of. Who's somebody's asking about someone at the table? Oh, lower right. Who is that? Oh. I know who that is. Think about it. Think about it. That's that's all for Hugh. Look at that beard. Oh. Mm, I can't wait. These are going to be such great characters. We can't spoil this, but oh man. So bottom left is is a mystery character too. Who's that? Could that be Adam or Alan with the dreads and then bottom middle and bottom right. There must be Hugh and Ulf. Oh. It's hard to tell. That could be Nettles. It could be Adam or Alan. It is hard to tell. All I can see is long dreadlocks and obviously a darker complexion. So we'll have to see. Oh, they are teasing us. <laughs> they are teasing us. To fight this war and win it. So <laughs> that, okay. So remember, cannot, TV show Damon is canonically bisexual. Um, we saw that in Pentos. There's no question. And uh, in one of the cut scenes in the dialogue between Lenor, or Lena and Damon, it's pretty clear that Damon and Lenor also a thing. Um, Lena says to Damon, as Damon is looking at the male serving man with a randy look, Lena says, it seems like you miss my brother as, you know, more than I do, or as much as I do, something like that. So this is a suspect look that he is throwing either at Ulf or Hugh. I mean, that is, <laughs> that is, uh. Just keep your eye out. This could be interesting. Um, some interesting plot lines there. Yeah, he also said you're prettier than your, your yeah, prettier than your brother. Yeah. So, so here's Rhaenyra, uh, dragon keepers and a dragon. This could be Cyrax on Dragonstone. Rhaenyra is marching with a purpose here. The realm will soon tear itself apart. Yeah, she's going to her dragon. That's cool. Look at the lighting here. Tear itself apart. Oh, that is so epic. So just a little bit of daylight coming from the crack in the ceiling and the torches. Man, that is good cinematography. Oh, and the Visenya braid. Yes. 
Rhaenyra wears her braid in uh, memory of Visenya. So it's a war braid. <clears throat> Very cool. Men do not remember the Let's go back to the table one more time. You said there's four dragon seeds? I'm seeing three. Because that's Jace and Bela on top. And then there's three on the bottom. So, I'm seeing three. But yeah, that braid is dope. That is a dope braid. Let's keep going. If men do not remember the oath sworn to King Viserys. There he and is. His rightful heir. If men do not remember their oaths to King Viserys, and this is probably Jace talking to Cregan, this overlay. So yeah, this is a much more, I mean, gosh, doesn't this remind you of Jon Snow and Stannis walking along the wall? You can see, you know, big wolf-shouldered Cregan, the long hair, the Ned, the Ned's stark hair, wolf pelt robe, broke back Winterfell, here it comes. I can't quit you, Cregan. Oh, look at that. He's got ice. He would have ice. That's probably this show's version of ice. Now, ice is a ceremonial great sword. Ned does not carry it everywhere. He does not fight with it. So this might not be ice. It might just be a sword. It's a little different than the old um, Valerian steel replica ice. But it could be. And if Cregan is carrying around ice, that means he's like a kind of an extra badass who fights with a great sword. Love your content. Hey, and you have to acknowledge bad behaviors in the chat. Eh, well, it's all right. Um, any thought in getting some more mods? Yeah, I have a lot of mods. I don't know. I, don't, I, I haven't had any problem with bad behavior in the chat today, so. I might have to get more for the season, but we'll see. So this is cool. And this is interesting. Okay, so we've already seen, we've already heard talk that there's going to be, the Jace Cregan thing is going to not just be at Winterfell, but rather will visit the wall. And we can see very clearly that is the case. First, we had this shot with what looks like Night's Watchmen. And now we can see they're literally walking the wall. So... Again, we don't need to get into spoilers to say that obviously Jace has been sent to Winterfell and to the north to win the allegiance of the Starks for Rhaenyra's side, and that clearly involves a trip to the Wall. So that's exciting. We have dragons, Winterfell, the Wall, some Starks, um, something called the Pact of Ice and Fire, and honestly, this is a whole can of worms. We know that Aegon's prophecy is a major plot point on the show. Uh, this is going to be a major opportunity to play up that prophecy. And really the thing here is, will Jace mention the prophecy to Cregan? Uh, the, the parallel question is, did, did Aegon the Conqueror tell Torrin Stark about his dream and the prophecy when Torrin was so quick to kneel to him instead of fight. I say yes. Check out my videos on Aegon's prophecy. I think that it's been discussed between the Targaryens and Starks multiple times, including between Cregan and Jace. But we will see, because that's a theory. And to his rightful heir. So... This, I believe, you can see the high tower. This is, um, is it Gawain or Gawain? This is, um, Otto's oldest son, Gwain. This is Otto's oldest son, right? So this is Allison's older brother. We saw him briefly in the, um, in the tournament in the first episode. I believe that's who this is. And yes, I believe Sarah Snow will be in the show. So we're gonna keep going here as Cleo has a temper tantrum. This looks like more Cyrax. So Rhaenyra is just flying around on her dragon everywhere. We've already seen that shot. Where's this? 
So that looks like a painting behind him. Because you can see that there's this is a brick wall, and then there's a picture of a castle. So he seems to be walking past a mural of some kind. Otto, Otto's brother's son. I'm not sure. Can somebody look up? It's the new high tower that's on the season. If somebody can look that up, but it's a painting of Heron Hall on fire. I think that's right. I think that's right. That would make sense. And that would set up some of the action. So Gwen is Otto's oldest son. Yeah. Okay. Allison's older brother. Correct. That's, I was right the first time. So yeah, I won't say too much about Heron Hall, but foreshadowing. I'm marching. You must Let's get this started. The high towers are marching. You must crush this beast at its head. The high towers are marching. You must crush the beast at its head. So remember, Corliss took a wound near the end of last season, and he barely made it to the War Council in time. So he is now got the crutch that's kind of cool honestly like this makes him even more pirate like like this is mad vibes i love kane corliss this is good yeah hobart is the brother thank you this is really cool this is, i just can't wait to see more of kane corliss corliss kane a little brighter blue here a little more of a maritime blue instead of the green that's cool yeah, Steve Toussaint is awesome. By the way, he is so tall in real life. He's like 6'4". He's a big dude. So he's saying cut the snake off at the head. Are they going to try to attack Old Town? Is there going to be some plot like that? What is he talking about? The high towers are marching. Cut the snake off at the head. What's this? Marching. You must crush this beast at its head. You must crush this, crush this beast at its head. Our terms are very simple. Okay. So that's Damon. So this is this is Heron Hall again. Our terms are very simple. I wonder who he's approaching with so much caution. He's he's ready to fight somebody. I wonder who. Who's he gonna fight out in the rain at Heron Hall? Terms are very simple. Renounce the false Oh. Seems like this show doubled down on Aegon's prophecy inscribing the dagger. Shouldn't HBO need to retcon Arya killing the Night's King? No, see, it's, it's less about that um, because Aegon's prophecy exists in the books. And I think George was a little upset that nobody was picking up on it. And so he dropped it in an interview before House of the Dragon so that we knew that it's something like that is canon in the books as well. Um, so that's more what they are establishing. The knife being the thing to kill the Night King is kind of like, oh yeah, the, the prince that was promised prophecy was the key to defeating the Night King. But it wasn't anything about the content of the prophecy. It was the knife it was carved on. We used it. Just, it's really dumb. Yeah. Don't think about it. Just pretend it didn't happen. And bend the knee to the king. Terms are very simple. Renounce the false king and bend the knee to the king. Renounce the false king and bend the knee to the queen. Or your house burns. Or your house burns. Oh, that's a nice choice. And we saw Kristen doing this, you know, doing some sort of execution as well. And so, like I said, Kristen, Damon, Amond, people like that, they will be forcing this choice on people a lot. Oh, I forgot to change the color. Boo. I've had the nasty green up here, this whole black trailer. That's awful. Awful. Nasty green. Anyway, love the armor. He's given somebody a whole... Let's go back to this this one here. So we see, yeah, Helena with the hand fidgeting like her mother, Alicent. Right? Some of the same stress stuff going on. And who who all is this here? It's So this is the funeral procession. Alicent and Helena. Hightower Knights... Paul Bears, and that's about it. Yeah. So. 
So this looks like Aegon's getting bad news. Like he's not, this is not like, hey, we're going to war face. This is like, and bend the knee to the crap. What just happened? He just got some bad news. Volsking and bend the knee to the or your house burns. So that was more of that battle in the woods. These people are wearing their helmets because they're extras. We don't need to really see who they are or how nice their hair is. Yes, that is Moondancer and Bela. Both shots are Bela. And the desired. There was some debate about whether or not the second shot is Bela also, but that's that's Moondancer, cream colored dragon. There is a greenish tint. It's always hard to see when the sun is behind the wings. But you can see that red cape, very distinctive. And you can see, yeah, it looks like the same. There's that cape. And it's the same sky. Exact same sky. So I think this is both Bela. And that's a very quick, you can see that dive is quick. This is a small, agile dragon. Do you think Alicent is lying to herself about the prophecy because she wants her son to hold the throne? So I was wondering about that earlier, Kevin. It is hard to say, and I think it's left ambiguous on purpose. Um, I think that, yes, I think she is on some level lying to herself. Why do people keep thinking Nettles is not in the show? She'll be on the show. They're just saving it. She's the most important dragon seat. Daron's not going to get cut. Nettles is not going to get cut. I just don't know why. People are saying it, and so other people are reacting to it. There's no information about that. So Moon Dancer. Desire to kill and burn takes hold and reason is forgotten. And the desire to kill and burn takes hold and reason is forgotten. When the desire to kill and burn takes hold and reason is forgotten. We will not even remember what began the war in the first place. Will not even remember what began the war in the first place. And that's just kind of showing you like, oh, the Greens were gonna go to war anyway. Well, Allison, you know, Rhaenyra pressed her case. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, once it gets started, all that stuff disappears, and it's just about fighting the war. That's forgotten. So what's he... It, what's he hitting? Can we see what he's hitting? Not really. Oh, it's moving. Yeah, that must be a bell or a gong. It is moving. Okay, I was wondering, is he like beating somebody like a captive or something but no the kill and burn takes hold and reason is forgotten <clears throat> that's interesting though why would he be beating a gong or a, a bell what, what do you guys think he's doing oh maybe that is a body maybe it's a body hanging like that and he's like just beating the crap out of somebody that's forgotten I bet that's what it is. Yeah, it's got to be a body. Because that doesn't really show. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the, the, the overlay of the words that she's saying too. Yeah. So. Well, I don't even remember what began the war in the first place. Huge Vagar. I think we've seen these two before. Damon walking into Dragonstone, probably, yeah, it looks like Dragonstone. It's that scene again. I fear what I've begun. I fear what I have begun. So this doesn't mean, I'm, I'm on Team Small Folk, Kevin. I am the originator of hashtag Team Small Folk, so. And what that really means is that all of the people with power in the show need to be judged by the criteria of how well are they handling their responsibility of rule. So under that criteria so far, Rhaenyra is doing a better job on the show. Um, they highlight how she hesitates to go to war for the very concern. She's like, ah, is it worth it? You know, so she's... She gave a good team small folk speech, but then they killed her son. And so, yeah. 
And so this is, she fears what she has begun. It doesn't mean it's all her fault. It just means that she's a self-reflective person who appreciates that she did have a choice to make and she made it. And it's like, okay, well, this is what we're doing. Now she's worried if this isn't gonna work out. That is Melly's. No, it's Caraxes. That's Caraxes. That's definitely Caraxes. Why did I say Melly's? That is more Damon in the rain at Heron Hall. June 16th. There's your. That's the day. All right. Where's Vagar? Cool, so there you have it, guys. Uh, if you have questions about any of this, go ahead and fire them at me, and I will take them. We can discuss whatever you want about this thing. Um, it's the standouts to me, obviously, Moondancer, Isle of Faces, uh, Aegon. The acting of Aegon and Rhaenyra and Alicent looks incredible enjoy seeing Kristen Cole just boiling over with rage constantly. Um, yeah, guys, if you, by the way, if you want to rewatch season one, which I'm sure everybody's going to do, we are doing a rewatch guide, an episode guide. We have done the first five episodes already. You can find them in the live streams tab. They are fresh and recent. So you'll see them right at the top. Uh, we will pick that up probably next week. Um, with uh, six, and then we'll go six to ten, and we're basically just re-watching the episode beforehand and then doing a live stream to break the episode down, but with the benefit of hindsight, and then using that to sort of preview uh, season two. So if you're doing a rewatch, we've got those five on the, on the channel, and yeah, like I said, you can watch episode one and then flip on our stream and watch as much of it as you want and then move on, just so to get a little more... Yeah, a little more uh, analysis. Am I going to be doing an after show live stream for season two? Well, of course. We were the second most popular after show last season. After only the great Alt Shift X. So that's no shame. Coming in second to Alt Shift. So yeah, we, are, we will be back at it and, uh, and holding it down. Immediately following every episode. But of course. I'll be having nettles on and... Tim will be around, and I'll have some other people coming on too, probably Faye Fire and Costume Co., Heidi from Costume Co., maybe some other people as well. Yeah, you guys, when they show Nettles, they're going to make a big deal out of it. Like, Nettles is super cool. She's almost one of the best reasons to adapt this entire story. So, And I mean the character Nettles, not my friend Girl Nettles, who cosplays character Nettles. How do you see the show building Kristen Cole into the Kingmaker? Well, he did crown Aegon, but I think it's going to be more about him, you know, pressing the case to do this or that, prosecuting the war. We can see that he's a raging, raging cauldron of emotion. He's got a grudge against Rhaenyra, and so that emotion will probably play into Kristen Cole's decision-making and his actions. So... Good to see you back, Guess. Sorry about the accidental, the accidental ban, the YouTube ban, but we got you. Gray Waste Goat, more like. Yes. I wonder if they have goats out in the Gray Waste. See, it's, think about who's prosecuting the war for the green side. It's like Aegon, who doesn't take this seriously enough. Aemond, who takes it very seriously but is aggressive. And then Kristen Cole, who's aggressive, but is like a mess. And then there's Otto and Alicent to clutch the pearls and I don't know. So <clears throat> as those younger people take power, the, the green side will look more aggressive. Cool. And yeah, if you are... 
Am I going to do more? Yes. The Hot D Season 1 recaps. Yeah, we did the first five. Exactly. That's what I was just talking about. The episode guides. We have done the first five and we will be getting back with that. I paused it knowing this trailer was going to come. So we will get back on that probably in like a week. Yeah, Laurie's... Laurie's is such a wild card. So I'm very interested to see... What's going on with that? Oh, you're talking about Nergal. Is that a Sumerian god? God of war, pestilence, married to the goddess of the underworld, depicted as a man with a lion's head who has a burning sword. Um, yeah, it's, that's a Mesopotamian deity, right, Brennan? I haven't looked into that, but that sounds cool. And the lion-headed man is, of course, part of Mithraism as well, which we know George is drawing heavily on for... Uh, a Song of Ice and Fire. Nergel from Warhammer. Well, they probably got it from mythology. Unless you're just talking about the Warhammer game, in which case I don't know. I think that's a real deity, though. That would be funny if it's a Warhammer god, and I'm like, I think that's Sumerian. <laughs> Somebody look it up and let me know. <laughs> Babylonia. Okay, that's what I thought. So the dagger is basically Thor's hammer. No. The dagger is just a Valerian steel weapon. Um, according to the show logic, any Valerian steel weapon could have defeated Night's King. Um, let's please just not talk about it. <laughs> it was dumb. They've got it. Ryan Condal's just doing the best he can to move forward with the show and make it closer to the books, but not completely trample on what the show did. So, uh, I like how Damon gets excited when Rhaenyra declares war. Yeah, it is a nice look. He's like, yeah, it's my girl. Let's go to war. And you can see like both Damon and Aemon and Kristen, these forces that are swirling around the, you know, uh, Alicent and Rhaenyra are both, Chomping at the bit for war. That's what they know. Yes, Nergal, real deity. That's good to know. Okay. Let's see here. So yeah, follow-up questions, like I said, final questions, and then I will blast out of here. And get back to work on all kinds of videos. Like I said, RLJ videos and some of the stuff that's coming. What do you guys think of the, what they're going to do with the wall and the others and all that? Are we going to see some whites? Some white walkers? We're we just going to visit the wall and talk and walk. Seems like we must, there'll be some little white attack or some incident at the wall that maybe Jace and Cregan will have to go and check out while they're at Winterfell. That's what I would guess. Because why else would they go there? I bet you something will, there'll be some incident that they'll need to go check out. If they cut Sarah Snow, I'd be surprised. It just seems like a lot of spicy, you know, drama that they put in Fire and Blood. I'd, why would you not do something with that, right? I don't know if she'll, if her and Jace will, you know, get married and all that stuff, but I, there, I bet you there will be a character, Sarah Snow, and they will do some version of whatever's behind the rumors. I've noticed Reyna has a round pin like Grey Worm wore in Game of Thrones. Where do we see Raina up close? I have a photo of Raina from the website. Let me see if she's on here. Yeah, okay, so there's, I have a picture of here on the, at the press room. Oh, 
oh no, I don't buy the idea that Helena's kids aren't Aegon's and they're secretly Aemon's. No, I don't think so. Is the dinner table scene a flashback? Might this be where Jace learns of the prophecy? Oh, Barris Aurelius, great call. Great call. Um, that is confusing. Is that, maybe that's not Jace. Maybe I was wrong. Where's the table? Sorry, let me find the table. Because yeah, Jace is in Winterfell. He already left. So this is either after he comes back. Find the table scene. Or it's a flashback. Maybe that's not... That looks like Jace. What do you guys think? Is that... Is that why you guys were saying there's four dragon seeds? Oh, we've seen Jace at the funeral. True. Jace is at the funeral for Luke. Oh, maybe that's... Somebody's saying maybe that's Joffrey. I don't think so. Because that person's taller than Bela. Sitting in the chair. So that must be Jace. Yeah, that side profile is very distinctive. And we it did look like he was at the funeral too. So he may, I guess he comes back. Maybe this is... Um, yeah, Joff wouldn't age that quickly. Yeah, they made him too young. So this is probably... Because the, the dragon seeds are already sitting at the table. So this wouldn't be a flashback. So this must be probably later in the season after Jace comes back from Winterfell. That's what I would guess. So. The cat with the beard is either Hugh or Ulf. And, the, and whoever's at the other side of the table is going to be the opposite, whoever isn't. So this is probably Ulf the White. And probably hard hue sitting opposite Rhaenyra. That's that's what I would say. Oh, good question, Madeline. Will we see Jace's dragon refuse to go over the wall, just like Alisande's dragon Silverwing refused to uh, go across the wall? That would make sense if we see something like that. Jace returned with a huge pile of groceries for that dinner. Great call. <laughs> he did. It's like, you guys... Those Starks are lying. They have all kinds of stuff in the glass gardens. <laughs> Look at this. That's hilarious. Cool. Right on. They have those glass gardens, man. Yeah, so this is interesting. I, the main thing I think they will do with the Jace plot line is feed us the prophecy stuff. You know, it's going to talk to Cregan about it. They're going to go to the wall. It makes sense that they're at the wall talking about the Whites and White Walk. Like, why would the why would the showrunners add this detail that's not in Fire and Blood of them going to the wall if they're not going to use that to highlight the importance of the prophecy? So I would say it's like all but certain that Jace and Cregan are going to discuss the prophecy, which is really exciting. Do you think Cregan will come south sooner? So in Fire and Blood, it takes him a very long time to come south. Um, hard to say. More like, will they come up with a reason? Because there's really not much of a reason given in the books. Am I tripping or didn't Daenerys go over the wall and that's how Viserion was winded? Yes. So George kind of added this to contradict the show. That's kind of like George put this in fire and blood specifically so that we'd know it's different. Um, so it remains to be seen whether or not House of the Dragon will conform to the book canon of not being able to fly over the wall or if they will not do that. But yeah, in the books it's implied that, that the dragons might not be able to cross the wall, either for magical reasons or just because it's like the ice is inimical to them and they don't like it. It's probably more about the 
the wards, the magical wards, they probably apply to dragons and others, potentially. But that's, it's vague, you know. I think it would be a cool twist if Vermax turns them around. Maybe he senses Rx's death because he was at the funeral. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, the dragons, I'm curious about that too. If uh, other dragons will sense the death of when a different dragon dies. Now look, Jason Cregan, they probably will not have a romance. That is mostly fun fandom shipping stuff. I don't think they're actually going to have a romance. There is a rumor that Jace... Well, I don't want to spoil things, but yeah. There might be something going on. But that is probably just fandom fun. It's more like a bromance. Yes, they are. They do become friends. And Jace reminds Cregan of his younger brother who died. And so they're definitely, yeah, there's at least a bromance. Will we see anything with like dragon eggs at Winterfell when Jace visits there? Because there's lots of rumors. There's a rumor that Vermax lays eggs in the crypts. We have no idea if that's true. It's presented as mostly a rumor. So... There's an opening for gay characters with Laenor and Joffrey Lawnmouth gone. Well, like I said, keep your eye on Damon and, and like one of those dragon seeds. I don't think we'll see Laenor again, but it's not impossible. Cool, guys. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. This, uh, this has been a good breakdown of the trailer. And I will be back with lots of House of the Dragon videos in the near future, of course. Lots of produced stuff. And we've got those rewatch guides coming up with episodes 6 through 10. You can find 1 through 5 on the live streams tab on the website. Uh, if you want to support the program, you can do that with the... Uh, you can join or you can join Patreon. And either of those things will get you a link to our Discord where we have a nice, happy, safe environment to talk about Ice and Fire and House of the Dragon with no mean people, which is honestly quite the thing um, these days. So Discord has really been going great. I've been hanging out there a lot. Hey, I'm on. And I have been dropping uh, advanced bits of my scripts, um, images, thoughts, all kinds of stuff. So that is the main benefit I am getting to people as far as the patrons and the YouTube channel member squishers, is I'm giving you content on Discord. Uh, it seems to work for me the best. I tried to put stuff out on the Patreon platform. It's the pl it's very good at managing the uh, the funds and the people and all that, but it's not so good as a social media platform. So we are using Discord for that. Discord is very easy. Don't be intimidated by it. It does have features, but it's easy to do the basic stuff. You don't have to do any of the complicated stuff. So if you join the channel as a YouTube channel member, there's a join button next to the subscribe button. It's $5 a month and it gets you access to the Discord and one free super chat a month. And similarly, if you join at Patreon at any level, we give you the Discord link. So yeah, we've been having lots of fun in there. Come on in. If you don't want to talk about House of the Dragon Season 2 on Twitter this year, <clears throat> excuse me, it's like, yeah, it's, it chokes, it's choke, chokes you up. It's not nice. If you want to talk about the show with other adult people who aren't standing, you know, one character and just throwing out bait all the time, the Discord is a place that you can do that. So it has been very successful with that and uh yeah and if there's anybody who likes the program and you're tight on money and you can't sign up for one of those things just contact me on social media i'll give you a discord link it's not meant to be um a gatekeeping thing it's just meant to be so that uh i guess it's a little bit gatekeeping it's just meant to be so random mean people don't wander in and ruin it that's all and it's meant to be something extra that i can give uh to you guys that support the program so welcome to squisher Madeline. And so if you want that link, just click on the members tab. Once you join, click on the members tab of the YouTube channel and you'll see this week's discord link. I dropped it a couple days ago and the same thing on Patreon. The top Patreon post will be the link to the discord. So 
That's it, guys. I'm going to drop the Danny Iceberg video next week. And then I'll be working on an RLJ video to come out the week after that. Um, and yeah, I will we'll let you know when we'll start the rewatch up again with episode six. It'll be soon. Maybe on Sunday, maybe midweek. I haven't decided yet. And that's it. Thank you very much. Leave a comment on your way out. And uh, this is very exciting. Looking, it's looking like a tasty feast <laughs> this season. So, yeah, I'm excited. I will be here with you with the post-game shows. And that's it. Talk to you soon.